first of all, I would like to apologize because today was really a, a crazy day. I, I really don't know. But I'm very happy to, that I arrived and I have the possibility to present this uh, very interesting work. Uh, first of all, human safety of uh, free hydroquinone derived from uh, herbal medicine products containing uva, uva or C folium. Uva or C folium, we will see, is a plant, no? And we have uh, this uh, extract for this plant is included in herbal medicine products. And we will talk about uh, they produce um, free hydroquinone. How safe is this production in the human co uh, in the human body? Um, First, um, this is the, uh, co the content, no? the, the index what I will present. Some of the ideas, so I, I try to, to make it a little bit progressive with information until I arrive to the conclusions and also the safety data is regarding human data. First of all, I would like to, um, to express uh, why it's uh, so important the herbal medicine products today. And the thing is, uh, we are talking about the whole herbal medicine market for 60 million billion. And uh, we are talking a, really, uh, a very important increase in the last years um, about uh, herbal medicine. And I would like to, to explain later what means uh, herbal medicines. We are talking about medicines. We are talking about products that are, um, that they, um, what is the name? They uh, agree uh, um, with the um, with the drug um, rules, and in this way, here when we are talking about herbal medicines, we are really talking only about medicines that mean legalized. Uh, they are on the market based on drug uh, laws. We are talking the, the most important or the relevant national markets for herbal medicines are in Germany, and the less the small one, although the biggest one, the larger, the largest. The small one is in Denmark. We can see also, I can do it with the ma mouse, yeah. Here in USA we are talking about 28 uh, billions. Um, we are um, in the European Union, sorry, USA. Japan is very important also. And here in the Asia uh, and Australia um, countries. So, ah, it's very important also the consumption. As you see, is uh, we are talking about 36 uh, millions of dollars. So we are talking about a big market that in the last in the last years are becoming much more much more important. Okay, when we are talking about herbal medicine products, we are um, this is defined as a medical product, a medici medicinal product that contains two type of things: herbal substances that are directly. Um, sorry, is here, serum substances, they are dry, fresh, they are parts of the drug, or they are um, herbal preparations that we are talking then about um, extractions and uh, what is a preparation coming from this herbal uh, substance. Herbal medicine products require marketing authorization and OR registration depending on, and they are based in this, uh, they are, they are based in this drug law on pharmaceutical products. Maybe it's stupid, uh, you can see that you think, oh, it's quite stupid why I'm saying it. But not all the um, herbal products are medicinal products, okay? We have a food supplements. These food supplements, they should not have pharma, um, pharmacological action. They are not based on drug laws. They are based on food laws. And it's completely different. Nevertheless, they are sold in pharmacies. They have very good uh, um, experience of with people, and they are used. Uh, they are really used in our market, in our society. But we are talking about different things, and this is very important because if we are talking about herbal medicine products, that means we have a safety, we have a quality, and this is what I would like to show. And this is uh, a very important area for uh, toxicology people. I would like this was uh, the aim why I wanted to be here. Because uh, we are talking about before our product is going to the market, it is really everything controlled. Something that doesn't happen with the herbal uh, products from a food supplement. They are only taking, taking in account that they are safe, they are not toxic. But if they, are, they have a, uh, they, they have efficacy or they have uh, the concentration is depending on, and this is what I would like to explain, uh, to, uh, to explain today. So, 
Um, there is then a law on pharmaceutical products for human use based on in a law in uh, Europe. And usually, because our products, uh, the products from our company are sold um, in all the world, usually these uh, health authorities, they also like to follow these laws. Regarding them, they protect the public health, they harmonize with authorization about the European Union, and they fa uh, facilitate also the way to, uh, to get a marketing authorization or a registration. So when we are talking about European medicine legislation, we are talking about three types of um, way to come to the market. This is a traditional use registration. That means this um, product, this uh, herbal product, or this herbal extract, uh, this extract from the, this herbal product is, um, has an evidence medical use for more than 30 years and 15 years inside of the European Union. That means we don't need to have clinical studies. We have no information about this. If uh, we go to the marketing authorization, do you see my mark? Yeah. If we go, uh, if uh, it alternative is a marketing authorization, then we are a well-established use, medical use, medicinal use, and that means we can show the efficacy of the herbal preparation based on a clinical study of good quality. So there we have some clinical studies and clinical results. And there is alternative, that is the third one, that is a marketing authorization when the company is doing all the information that is required. That means toxicology, clinical safety. This is quite expensive and this is quite a risk, but many people do it. Why? Because based on this European medicine legislation, I will show you then, there are some monographs, monographs from these plants where we get information. If we are not including these monographs, that means we have to produce ourselves the data, okay? And then sometimes there are very interesting plants, and people, um, companies, they make their own products in this plant, although there are no monography in Europe. And then for this, they have to do, uh, they have to um, initiate all this toxicological efficacy and safety, okay? And this is the third, there is no one, no more, is the third wise to come to the market with a hair of product. Okay, so EMA is the European Medical Agency, and inside of the EMA there is a committee of herbal medical medicinal products. This is the HMPC, and this HMPC is um, BC, giving to the EMA a lot of information. In this uh, group, there are 28 European Union member states, and they are, most of them, they are experts in the field of herbal medicines, advisors, they collect information, and this is quite interesting because they meet each other in some uh, time, and then they collect all this information to make the monographs. And when we are talking to collect, we are talking about quality, about tox risk of toxicology, they are really efficacy, uh, safety, everything. That means if they don't get the correct information, it's possible that the monograph from this plant is not having this information from a company, from a country, can be a problem. So these people used to be people for health authorities. They meet each other, all the countries, and then they decided to evaluate the scientific information about this plant. From this evaluation about long uh, standing medicinal use, about efficacy, then they come to the monographs. These are the monographs or the listing. What means listing? Means some plants, they are so well informed, oh, so well uh, known, that if a company wants to produce a herbal medicine product, it's not necessary to do any, pro any um, um, study, only to control, you follow the rules, and you have, um, uh, if you follow the rules uh, that uh, we will see later, then you are not required to make anything. But this, in this list, there are really few drugs, okay? I think there are 14 uh, now. But something like Sumaspil Badrian, no? Or oh, Valerian, it's not included. Okay, 
So from this, from this um, high BC monograph, from this listing, that is this type of uh, herbal substance or preparation, that they, uh, they have a traditional herbal use and then they, are, they can go to the market without any test. Um, they collect this information, the efficacy and the safety, and then they can go to marketing authorization or registration. Okay, what means? All the herbal medicine products in the EU market have to fulfill the demands of the committee for herbal products and the competent national authorities. This from other countries, for other countries outside of Europe, it is also a secure. So many countries ask to us, we will follow the monograph, although they are not obligated, but they have some, uh, some um, something like a security or something like uh, they are, um, they, the health authorities, they like to, to take a look to the monographs, although they are not obligated. So the European legislation, on, this is the, the high PC, so they, they have herbal medicine products, they are then um, fulfill the demands that it, the, EU the European Union legislation, the pharmaceutical quality, the, standard product, the, the standardized product, the production process, Drug safety, that means preclinical studies, genotoxic, mutagenic, pharmacovigilance, prove well established traditional long extended medicinal use. So this, all this information is coming <coughs> from this, uh, this um, committee. So in this way, so it looks like the, the page I wanted to show you because you go to, to this uh, European medicine agency, to the H, um, to the herbal medicine products, and you get all the information in this way. This is the normal page, the first page. Afterwards, you have the committee, and there you can see clinical pharmacology, experimental toxicology, and all these things. So you see there are, at this moment, 140 monographs, final monographs, 16 are in revision. That is very nice, because sometimes this group of uh, specialists, they forget something. And it's not so easy to get a revision. And you see, many of uh, uh, there, there are some others that they are really even no, they did not start. But anyway, so if you go to the to the page of herbal medicine for human use, you see there is an alphabet. You can our case in our case is this um, uva ursifolium. Uh, you go to the A, and then you look for the information inside. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. And then you can find here, inside of all these herbal products, uh, you can find here this uva ursifolium. You go inside of this page and then you find a final assessment report where is really all the information inside. And you find also the monograph. On the monograph is something like, is a it has a structure like this summary um, for um, a specific, um, oh, you know, I, I forgot now, sorry. Um, about uh, the information that has the herbal medicine product. It's something like the um, ISPC highs, this all information from a medicine, what you find in the packet inside, okay? So you have here the final assessment, is all the data information, also with the list of reference, overview of the comments, because everybody has a little bit, uh, has some time to make comments, to make critics, or to uh, provide new information. And here is finally, the final community herbal um, monograph. So this is the way, in the way that looks like, I don't know if you can see it. And then come the, the pages, you see the quality, that means if we want to have a herbal medicine product inside of this um, legal frame, um, frame, then you have to follow also the dry extract radio, you have to follow the extract that, that you use, the solvent extract, you have to follow the doses, the indication, but it is possible. If you do, you can bring them a product on the market, but you have also some security. Why I'm saying all these things? Because when we follow, when we see all the information that I'm giving, and someone comes with a question, it is sure your product? Are you sure that your product is not toxic? I mean, why come this, this question? I tell you that I am a medicine, I have a medicine product. It's impossible that it's toxic. Otherwise, they have authorities, they will not allow it. And we are talking about 30, 40, 50 years, no? And this is the reason why I try to uh, bring all the information here about this. 
So this is the first time, uh, the first page, quality and quantitative composition. So we are talking about therapeutic indication. It is necessary to uh, support with uh, literature what is known about this, uh, why it is for this therapeutic indication, also the administrate the doses, the dosage, and uh, contraindication, special uh, warnings and precautions. So uh, all the information is inside of this monograph. If someone wants to know something about the herbal preparation, about a plant, then we, this is the way to look for that. Not in internet and botanic book, it is only this way, because this is really the specific, uh, the specialized people, the expert in this tema, that they are really working in, in this uh, area of work. So this is the expert report, uh, the assessment report. And here exactly in the same way, in the same way that we are talking about historical data, non-clinical data, clinical data, clinical safety, pharmacovigilance, all this information, and we are talking only about plants, okay? So this is uh, the plant that we are we're talking today. And there is a product from a company, and then this product is on the, on the market. And uh, we, but nevertheless, we are talking about this extract, because this extract is, um, something like an uh, example, um, I just to discuss how we uh, find out if one um, substance or active principle is uh, responsible for a toxic uh, event or not. So the herbal preparation is an ethanolic dry extract of this plant. This, we use only the leaf, leaves, and has also a composition, so um, here you can see there is a clear how much is given with a dra uh, drug extract radio, that is very important. And this special, this herbal preparation is standardized to 70 milligrams of arbutine, and arbutine is one of the components of this extract. The uh, dosage, the pathology uh, is in adults and children over 12, then two times, um, uh, two, two tablets, three times, we are talking then about six, tablets per day, and we are talking about the recommended dose, of course, from this monograph, from the European um, legislation, about 40, uh, 420 milligrams of arutin. So the use, the indication of this extract, extract is to train symptoms of lower urinary tract infections. So this extract that we are choosing for this hair amazing product, in, in fact, um, comply with the requirements of quality and quantitative composition, dosage, therapeutic area of application. Um, one of the information that you can find in this expert report is which other products are in the in Giro with this extract and with the hair amazing product. And then you can see here that, for instance, as a marketing authorization since um, 1976, this is the product we are, uh, this is a herbal substance, this is not the product that we are using in Spain, in France, here in Germany, in Poland, Spain, uh, Estonia, Slovenia. So this is the product that we are talking about today. And there are also other countries with other type of, but there is a market, marketing authorization here, a registration, and here a registration. So this ethanolic uva ursifolium extract comply, comply with, complies with the quality of the extract, um, with the requirements, talking about quality, about safety data, that means uh, the good laboratory practice also no, uh, with the data. We provide the data from genotoxic mutagenic risk, safety data regarding humans, and also with the medica medicinal use. That means comply with her pharmaceutical quality, and uh, the uh, drug safety is well documented and the medical use is proven by, by, the, by the monograph. So what means this? What means that the herbal, uh, the medical use is proven by, by the monograph? I mean, the question is, do we, do we have clinical studies? We say no. Why there are no clinical studies? Because this uh, extract is already about more than 50 years in the market because there are a lot of experience with. And then this long standing medical use and experience is, con is, um, is uh, corroborated from this monograph because they collect all the information regarding, for instance, this uh, Commission M monograph, 
this uh, World uh, Health Organization monograph, this um, European uh, uh, Scientific Cooperation for Phytotherapy, and this um, Commission of the Health and Medic Medicinal Products. They are collecting all this information and then they bring this information to say there is sufficient evidence of medic medicinal use through a period of at least, at least 30 years that is the requirement, including 15 years in the European community. In this moment, then this is the allowance that to go to the market. Okay, there are several monographs where we can also find information regarding phytotherapy, and these are monographs, but regarding um, um, our extract. This is the uva uh, ursifolium. Um, so you see, the indications are similar, similar, but no uh, the same. Uncomplicated infection of the lower urinary tract when antibiotic treatment is not considered ex essential. Treatment of symptoms of mild recurrent low, lower urina urina urinary tract infections. So the dosage is described in this type of monographs. Although the herbal medicine product, uh, the, um, the committee for the HMPC is really um, the um, most relevant when we are talking about a marketing authorization or a registration to bring this herbal preparation to the market. The others is just uh, supportive. All of them, they conclude that there is a positive benefits risk profile to say there are, the efficacy is, uh, is positive, just yes, to say this. Uh, ah, side effects, we can see here, so there are no so they are the typical, because uh, these extracts, they have, self, uh, they, they have a lot of uh, techniques, and they are really the unspecific um, effects. So which are the more relevant active principle or components, com no, constituents from, constituents from, uh, from this extract? Here we see the hydroquinone, uh, the hydroquinone derivates arbutin free hydroquinone Phenol acid, acids, and uh, flavonoids, citrapex. Now, of course, there are more because uh, uh, this is what's what was for me fantastic. I mean, I was uh, of course working many years with um, uh, what is the definition of a chemical uh, medication, and then they have only one component, and they have some different possibilities of uh, mechanism of action, but only one. The difficulty of this is you have so much, but I'm, uh, I, it's really uh, to see, um, to have a synergism, you have antagonism, you have really, it's complicated, and this is really a challenge, yes, to say. Okay, when we are talking about arbutin, arbutin <coughs> is just the hydroquinone, the hydroquinone pl um, plus the um, glucose, um, and uh, there, because of a beta-glucoxidasa, it's possible to degrade, not to degrade, no, it's too broken. And uh, later we will see, because of the metabolism, this uh, hydroquinone will be then uh, metabolized to um, um, conjugates, conjugates. So, our first study, was a pharmacokinetic study regarding elimination. That means we have 12 healthy volunteers, six males, six females, and we give only one, uh, six uh, tablets uh, from this preparation. They had 40, 20, uh, 420 milligrams of routine, and just we collect the urine and we take a look what we found in the urine, okay? And we collect urine, this is the data, yes, and this is the data of all of them, I will explain to you why, and we remove one component, and, and the final, the total free hydroquinone was almost one milli milligram, and the, uh, and the total hydro, I'm ah, sorry, sorry, I, I make a mistake. When we are talking about uh, free hydroquinone, uh, we are talking only about the molecular hydroquinone, okay? That is what is asked uh, for safety concerns. Uh, the total hydroquinone is, uh, is explaining the, fry, uh, the free hydroquinone plus uh, the conjugates. 
So here we can see free, hydro, free hydroquinone, we have almost one milligram, and the total hydroquinone, we are talking about 109. So, when we, are when we look to the individual urine, sa sa uh, urine sam samples, and we take a look to the content of free hydroquinone, we observe that there is one person who has, from the beginning, before we gave the medication, has a high level of hydroquinone. Here, 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 here. And for this reason, when we made the mean value, we, we uh, removed this passing because we considered that this was, um, uh, this extreme high value uh, level from the beginning was really a, um, uh, mistake, no um, artifact, and then uh, we remove these passings only for the calculation of the mean value. So here's the elimination of the free hydroquinone. Here we observe in the urine that we, both of them, this is the um, free, uh, this is the total hydroquinone and this is the free hydroquinone regarding the time. So between zero and six hours, six hours, 12 hours, 12 hours, 36, and here's the total. And we observe that there is um, progressive elimination of these uh, metabolites from the abutin. Time dependent and also gender independent because uh, here we can co compare, uh, compare also um, men and women and we did not observe a difference, a significant difference. So finally, um, in this way, uh, we found then that from the abutin dose, uh, 0.6% was eliminated as free hydroquinone. That means in the urine we have free hydroquinone, 0.6% of the dose, that is one milligram. And, and also we found in the urine, this is the progression you see with regarding the time, you see the progression here, and here's the total. We observe that we have 70% of the arbutin dose is eliminated as both the metabolites pl uh, plus the uh, fry drug. So here's the metabolism. You can find this in, in this publication. It's described. So the International Journal of Toxicology is described this, uh, uh, metaboli uh, this metabolism. Um, this metabolism was built up, um, built up from um, literature, from literature that is talking about what happened with arbutin is um, absorbed, uh, is um, uh, um, absorbed in the, um, in the um, intestine and what is happening then, why so fast, why there is no, uh, this uh, main process that is the, re the, the responsible is the small intestine um, with, a, um, with a active transport and this large intestine in regard to also the uh, microflora or the bacteria is really a very small why. And this uh, mecha metabolism is also is uh, was described uh, with with a lot of um, literature uh, information. So the thing is, um, arbutin is very fast, uh, goes to the liver, is um, break down. Hydroquinone is hydroquinone is free here. Conjugation is very fast, and we know because there are also other pharmacokinetic um, <coughs> studies all already publi published. And what our study what to say is in urine we found 70% of the total with 0.6% uh, from the free hydroquinone. Why is important? We will see it. We compare now our data with other pharmacokinetic studies, and we observe we are really quite good. I mean. This is uh, also other studies in this way. So they are really 70, 85%, 75%, uh, 0.6% of these are already. This was a small, small publication at the beginning and the data that we have now, or for two years, is really the same. It is really the same, the same data. So when we go to the next study, we wanted to know, okay, now we have the, fr the free hydroquinone and the metabolites in the urine. But what happened? The bacteria responsible for the infection 
is in fact in the bladder, and we want to know what happened. Is the, fra is the free interferon responsible of the um, um, antimicrobial um, eff effect, or are the metabolites? We don't know at this moment. Okay, and the thing is, we give them uh, these doses to four healthy volunteers. Um, that is the, the usual, the recommended dose. We collect again the urine samples, and we apply these urine samples in Petri shell with E. coli, 24 hours, 36, uh, 30, uh, 37 uh, degrees. And we, um, we, we precipitate the bacteria, of course, and <coughs> we centrifugate, and we found in the sediment <coughs> there were 20 times more fried hydrogenol as in the, in the, in the, um, oh, in the supernatant. That means we consider that the, metabo the metabolites were assimilated by the bacteria they were taken. There, inside of the bacteria was then the metabolite um, breakdown. The free hydrogenol was in, um, free inside of the bacteria, and then is the reason why the bacteria died. But the free hydrogenol was not outside, it was only inside of the bacteria. And when we eliminate the bacteria, the free hydrogenol is leaving the organism with the bacteria, because we did not find more uh, hydrogenol. At the final, then, we have to say that the metabolites are responsible of the um, anti antimicrobial um, effect. So here we can see that we measure also in the four healthy volunteers, and uh, the supernatant has really very few, and 20 times was, in, involved, uh, was um, increased the concentration in the sediment. So the free hydrogenol was inside of the bacteria. So uh, the elimination of the albutin metabolites after oral intake from these 420 milligrams albutin, this is what I say, that this is, is a summary. Uh, 0.6% of the uh, administrated albutin dose was created as free hydrogenol. Six uh, out of 12 volunteers did not eliminate it, uh, free hydrogenol because it was not detected. And 70% of the administrated uh, albutin dose was eliminated as conjugates. So the free hydrogenol, the, the conjugation occurs inside of the bacteria. The uropathogenic uh, bacteria, um, such as E. coli, have um, the ability to deconjugate. This is also uh, information that we got from the, the literature. 20 times the higher amount of what we say already, and the conjugates um, in found the urine were ingested, what I say, by the uropathogenic bacteria and transformed inside of the bacteria to free hydrogenol. Also, we know the mechanism and the intracellular form it. Free hydrogenol is responsible for this bactericide effect. Of course, we have always data that support this type of. Uh, so, what we know then, we have then one milligram, almost one milligram of free hydrogenol recovering the urine. This is going to be our concentration to calculate the rest of the safety parameters. Okay, what is the exposure of the humans to free hydrogenol? The elimination, how we, I say, in 36 hours was one milligram. The level of free hydrogenol after 36 hours were around 0 0.6, 0 0.5 micrograms per milliliter. And after calculation, because we have a program for this type of things, uh, we found that we are talking about an exposure level of 11 micrograms per kilo body weight per day. This is our exposition, exposure level to free hydrogenol, high hydrogenol. What happened? Where is hydrogenol? Hydrogenol is also in food. We can find in coffee, in tea, in red wine. A lot of in cigarettes. We feed them or feed them. This is really a wheat uh, products, broccoli, but most, the most highest concentration was in peers. There are also studies, that is a very interesting one, about high hydrogenol diet. <coughs> And they have a very high level, level because they also took, they took a, uh, take a look or took a look inside of the levels in blood. Our, compared with these other things, we are one day 11 micrograms free hydrogen per day. Ah, body weight. 
And here we are calculating with 60 kilos body weight. So foods are consumed several times a day for lifetime without causing adverse events or safety concerns. How we, how we calculate this? We, when we are talking about calculation of the safety, human safety, there are many possibilities. It's a threshold uh, for, um, let's see, for, oh, no, did this look? There is another possibility, we know the product, we know it's either free trucking on, we have information about toxicological studies, and then we are able to calculate some exposure limits. This uh, permit, permitted daily exposure uh, um, limit es estimates the dose below which there is a na negative risk to human cell. It represents this is a substance specific dose that is unlikely to cause adverse if, um, effects. In an individual is, if an individual is exposed to at or below this dose every day for a lifetime. This is a definition you can find here, the guidelines. These are guidelines, of course, that the health authorities used to um, have, um, used, to, uh, used to ask if you want to calculate and also to verify uh, this uh, component or this constituent from this extract is really below this limit. Okay, so this is the guideline you have to use. So when we calculate this, we have to use some information about the, the free hydroquinone. If you don't have, the, you have to go to other type of calculations. And here we have acute oral toxicity or repeat oral toxicity. And we use this Noel uh, value. And we use also for the rat. So here, in the calculation based on this guideline, oh, um, we can calculate uh, this permitted uh, the, um, exposition as uh, with this null. In this case, we are using 50, ki 50 kilos body weight, and uh, the, the, the value that we found here is 100 micrograms kilo body weight per day. So, this is uh, our limit of exposition 100 and our concentration that we found in our ring is 11 micrograms. What means this? Means that the level is nine times higher than the maximum exposure level that we can find in a daily usual therapeutic dose and especially when we calculate in this way it's easier to understand this level, this level below there is absolutely no risk. We are talking about 50, 50 tablets per day. Three. The level of free dopinone produced by the administration of a recommended daily dose uh, no, no, possibility, no probability of any toxicological risk to human health. So, supporting this low risk, there are many other things. Ah, this is the thresholds of toxicological concern was described by the, by the uh, Committee of Hair Medical Pro uh, Medicinal Products and was talking this really the most conservative of this value. And also the other monography, uh, monographies that we have, we talk about these phytotherapy monographies, they are talking about these benefits risk um, is, a, is positive. And usually in this way is how we discuss the uh, safety of our products with health authorities. So, what happened with gain of toxicity? This is something that used to ask uh, all the health authorities. It is necessary that we provide our um, genotoxic um, essays and um, results. When we are talking about this, is quite stupid, not stupid, but quite hmm, interesting because uh, health authorities, they ask about the genotoxic effect of the extract. Okay, I put extract in the genotoxic essays, and we take a look and we say, no, no the genotoxic. Is the same as in our body? Mm -hmm. We have the extract in our body, or then this is this um, constituents, they have some metabolism, and then the products of our metabolism are genotoxic or not. Nevertheless, when the health authorities they want this, we do this. But in this case, we wanted to do something different. 
we want you to take a look, a look, is this free retinol that we have in our ring menotoxic? This is the question, not distract anyway. So here there are again guidelines that we have to use in order to support that um, our, to support also the essays that we describe and also our results. And testing of medicinal products in small a battery of genotoxic tests in which pro or equilibrium systems in vitro, in vivo experimental setups without or with or without metabolic uh, activation are employed. And there is, in these guidelines, there is really a description how we have to do this. So if someone thought we have an extract, we give to the rat, the rat is not dying, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not enough. So here we took up there again, we have the ring from before, yeah. but in this way we make a pool. And then here we have to use the third volunteer also, because we did not know this as we uh, did the, uh, this experiment. And the third volunteer, of course, is inside. So then this is the reason what we have now 0 0.5 micrograms milliliter, and we have also 36 uh, for the total hydrophenol. Okay, all the 12 uh, volunteers are the same, are, are included, because we made, we made a pool of the urines. And the, this urine we took to the AMS test, and we took to the micronucleus, macronucleus test. Why? Usually, if the AMS test, see the, the AIMS test, sorry, the AIMS test is negative, we have to do nothing. But we go a little bit farther, and we say, okay, mm, but it's possible that something, something different happened, and then we wanted to look at this. Nevertheless, so this is the AIM test. We use uh, Salmonella, uh, I think you know everybody, this uh, bacteria, identify this type of uh, points mutations. We don't use, we only use four, and it's obligated to have five. That means we do not comply with the genotoxic guidelines. It's what, it was not our, uh, our objective, okay, our aim. And we use then plate incorporation test and pre incubation test. The evaluation of mutagenic potential means that it used more than two times the increase of the numbers of these uh, revertent colonies over the negative control, of course. So we apply. The concentration of the, we know the concentration of the hydrophenone here, and to the bacterial stress, ah yeah, sorry, we make a preliminary toxi toxicity test just to take a look if the urine was toxic to the bacteria, and then we can take a look what happened with the, with the uh, mutations. Huh? But we found not, no. Here it was one of the uh, bacteria, here is the other, and we saw there are no changes regarding um, in comparison to the control, and it was okay, no mutation, but also no toxic. And here are the positive controls, just to validate that the essay was running, that the essay was okay. So this was the positives, with um, S9 or so, with metabolism or without. We make also delusions, because we want it to be, um, <coughs> sometimes it's a delusion then uh, important or not, okay. So this is the plate incorporation test, and we take, took a look it is uh, mutagenic or not. The red one is the positive control. And then here we, we see all the bacteria with, without metabolism, with metabolism. And we observe there are no changes in comparison to the control. There, then we can say there were no mutagenic um, effect in, uh, in this test. We saw not a mutagenic. A mutagenic. So the second one is pre-incubation test is the uh, um, usual way of uh, performing this aim, aim test. And here again, we have the positive control. And here we have the urine. Um, and here's the urine with external free hydrophenone. We also did not found any mutagenic uh, effect. Here's the positive, uh, the, the control. And we did not observe any changes. So any change, an increase in the mutagenic, um, in these mutagenic colonies, in these muta, uh, mutagenic colonies. So here without metabolism and with, with metabolism. And the positive control is just showing that um, the essay is validated. So 
we go to the micronucleus uh, test. Of course, here is also mutagenic and of hematoxic, and we also we are applying something that was uh, 10 milliliters uh, of urine. Yeah, it is a little bit strange, but first of all, we take, we took a look at preliminary study on acute toxicity to take a look if the urine is toxic uh, for the mouse. And for this, we use only uh, four mouse, and we use the concentration that's used um, in the guidelines, 10 milliliters per kilo body weight. And we just uh, examined the acute uh, toxic symptoms. They were not dead or something like that, and at intervals, that is the normal way to, uh, to follow this uh, essay. And we found that there were no signs of toxic uh, reactions and also undiluted. The most concentrate was considered a suitable uh, test item. That means we go then further to the micronucleus test to take a look to the genotoxic um, effect. So we have here 10 mouse per test. That means 120, I think. 140 or 120 mouse. So they apply these samples, control, urine, um, undiluted, undiluted, diluted, and uh, one, ta, one, two, and one, ten. A control urine, and here controlling plus external free uh, hydroquinone, and also the positive control. We apply to the, ma uh, to the mouse, inject this intraperitoneal, we wait between 24 and 48 because it's the time to be sure that the microneuclus had enough uh, time to, to be produced or to be made. I mean, we have we made also some uh, other uh, tests. And here we prepare then the material, and um, it's just to say the cellular target is the polychromatic uh, erythrocytes in the bone boromose. This is the typical, usual uh, microneuclus test in rat. No? Okay, the evaluation. Used, we, we used 2,000 polychromatic erythrocytes, so a score per animal for frequency of micronucleated, um, micronucleated cells, and also the toxicity, the risk of toxicity. Uh, we, it was um, by, uh, evaluated by 1,000 uh, erythrocytes radio between this polychromatic and the normal chromatic erythrocytes. So a test item is considered mutagenic if it induces either a dose-related increase in the number of micronucleated uh, polychromatic erythrocytes or a statistical significant positive response. Cytotoxic effect, when we found this radio, that uh, we found that the radio is uh, below the normal. And uh, the statistical significance was the, the usual 0 0.05. Okay, these are the values and we can observe the word. No change, only the positive control, of course, and here there were also a no, a no significant change. That means no dose-related increase in the number of micronucleated uh, polychromatic erythrocytes were observed, no clear increase in the number of micronucleated um, cells, no cytotoxic e effect, nothing. From this urine that we take from uh, volunteers, they were using the usual doses, the recommended doses for this uh, herbal preparation. Um, we wanted to provide also safety data. So a multi-center survey with 75 registered doctor office uh, located in Germany was conducted in the 92-93, reporting the clinical experience with uh, this uh, substance and reporting the clinical experience from this herbal medicine product during the years changed the name but has the same composition for the treatment of diseases of the um, infections of the lower uh, urinary tract. We are talking about 186,000 patients and uh, 56 uh, doctors reported experience with uh, 17,000 children and adolescents, although the herbal, now the monograph, uh, does not allow to use this for uh, children and adults. But in this time, in this year, it was allowed. Uh, now it's much more difficult to make. This is the reason why we have no, we don't need to make this data again. So the doctors talk about to have more than 30 years of experience with this product, with this herbal preparation. And most of the, most of the, um, of 34%, 34.6% of the, 
pacients use this um, herbal preparation for uncompli uncomplicated uh, histitis. Uncomplicated histitis means most of them they have Escherichia coli as bacteria and uh, they have also uh, um, <coughs> very clear symptoms. For instance, they have no fever, they have no blood, uh, they have sex symptoms that are um, pain uh, during the dictionary and also um, some, I forgot now, but they are really clear why it's uncomplicated, especially because they have no fever. And most of them, this is the problem, when someone, especially women, when they have these symptoms, they need to have something because they know they have an, an infection or it was uh, cold or something like that, and they don't want to use antibiotics because we have a big problem. We used to, ha we used to have, uh, we, no, we have to use antibiotics only when it's necessary because otherwise we get then this um, oh, um, resistance. resistance, of course. And this is a big problem. This tema I did not bring here, but, but this is in fact one of the temas I like to uh, show because in Europe, and also in, 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 uh, in the complete world, is moving a lot the um, resistance with some bacteria and it will be a, a moment that any bacteria, uh, that any antibiotic will be able to, to uh, against to a very easy streptococcus. Because we have uh, every time using antibiotics when we are not necessary. And especially for this uncomplicated histitis, it is really, if it's possible to use other alternatives, we should not use antibiotics. This is the question. And in fact, we use it, you will see now. So in this survey of information, we found the efficacy was okay, and they don't use to urine alkalinization. This is a tema in general that is very important, and is another way, of, uh, another tema. Three days is required is required to have an effect, an effect, and um, also the is not necessary to use this herbal preparation more than one week. Nevertheless, because of the risk of this free hydroquinone, they say always don't use more than one week. And in fact, it's not necessary. So the toler tolerability from this big group of people was almost 100% okay. Nothing, absolutely nothing. So of course, this is very easy to say, no? In this period, but what we are talking about pharmacovigilance, we have pharmacovigilance data, of course. And this is a widespread odyssey, so it's free in a pharmacy to buy a medical use, and we have, of course, a lot of data. So um, in the last 10 years, we have around 7 million of patients. And in this period of time, this post-market in this, um, this is SUR, is the name for this, pharmacovigilance data, we have 161 cases with 275 adverse events. Adverse events that are related with gastrointestinal complaints and allergic reactions. Nothing. These are information that you can find in the medicinal in the medicinal <coughs> in this is or oh, the, the product information for uh, for the um, for the consumer, no? for the person. Other things that I didn't present today is um, our product is antibacterial, antiadherent, and inflammatory properties, product, spec uh, product spec uh, uh, spectrum for antibacterial activity, no development of antibiotic resistance bacteria, local antibacterial, ah, but because the mechanism has nothing to do with this. We, see, we observe no, that it's a metabolism, hydroquinolysis bacteria, and then it's, the, uh, it's dead. So that has nothing to do with the resistance. No effect on int intestinal, vaginal flora, immune defenses, and safe and well tolerated. In fact, ah, I forgot something. We see this in 10 years, where the product is almost uh, 40, 39 years or 40 years in the market. Um, in the last 10 years, we have 7 millions of patients. This is really almost one million, less than one million per year. I mean, really a lot. I mean, this is one of products that makes more money. Okay. 
So, our conclusion is free and co-create nitrophenone were detected and quantified in human urine samples. Human exposure to free hydrophenone was below its permitted daily exposure. No risk for human health is posed at or below these doses every day for a long time. In vitro and in vivo mutagenic and genotoxic studies were negative, accordingly, or in samples obtained from these health volunteers, receiving a regular recommended dose as proposed for therape therape therapeutic use. Uh, in this mo in the the H uh, in the HMPC uh, monograph, there's no mutagenic risk. Pharmacovigilance data, that is human data, from patients of people who has this disease or the infection, huh? from more than 30 years do not found adverse events different are supported for the SPC pill. No. In agreement with the monograph, ubaucifol in preparation are safe. And this is my last year. And thank you very much for your, for your attention. <laughs> I just want to tell you short, this is the way of rationing. So this is the way of thinking when we go to a health authorities to demonstrate that something, a constituent, is not toxic. It's really guidelines no, in this way. So thank you for this very brilliant presentation. So uh, is there any questions? Yes. <laughs> um, just uh, uh, so you understand that Google works is a uh, traditional herbomycin in neuro procedure, right? And um, I saw in one of the tables, I saw that the, the traditional herbomycin, so you don't need to undergo any kind of uh, clinical studies. Yes. Right? Uh, one of the tables you show says that uh, interactions are not reported. But they are if they're not reported, it doesn't mean that they don't exist. Yes. They're just not reported. Yes. So the, the, my question is more, do you think that these uh, interactions are not reported because they don't exist? Or because the pharmacovigilance systems are not well prepared to uh, interpret this kind of uh, uh, results that comes from I don't know, from, 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 from GPs, from practitioners that are not actually uh, able to detect these kind of interactions, especially in nowadays that people take herbal medicines along with uh, conventional drugs. So it's difficult to detect, or you think that because it's a traditional herbal medicine, it's safe or, and there is no interaction at all? No, it has nothing to do. Interactions has to do with the publication of data. Mm -hmm. Inter interactions, uh, they tested, so there are tests, but it was negative. Inter uh, you are writing something. When we have pharmacovigilance, it's quite difficult because there are, uh, ph in pharmacovigilance data, there are also a lot of data from consumers, nothing with doctors. And then this is difficult because, you know, the worst of everything in herbal medicine products is the pharmacovigilance is regarding the plant, but not my product. It's terrible. Because if someone has a dirty product, a dirty extract, and has some problems, I have to demonstrate that I have nothing to do with this extract. But then we'll be there, yeah, there are this type of uh, adverse events. So there are consumers, that means I take the herbal medicine, no in the recommended doses, I take I, I don't know how much, and then I have a problem, and then I go and I write myself, sorry, I have an interaction. And we have to take into account. And we have to talk about, and we have to um, give up or only what is going on with this person, has this problem, has not. So if there is interaction with alcohol, or if were interaction, during these 30 years or 40 years, 39 years is in, on the market, and really, other extracts are already in the market and this is really a problem because they use more, then they, they had all, already some information. For instance, if um, in case of herbal um, uva ursi increase the activity of the P450 um, and you, the cytochrome um, will be already published. We have of course data. But this is the second part of the problems. We can publish all the data, and we are now free to publish the data, or to show the data, although the health authorities, they know the data. 
because otherwise someone can present, can make a, um, a extract and a product with our results. And this is the big problem. But they know everybody. I mean, we go also to conferences where we are uh, talking with the herbal preparations, and the health authorities, they have all the information, but we can publish things that is no problem for us. So I would, I would tell you, so uh, the conjugation is not, is a, the conjugation is the most important metabol, metabolizing phase or step in this uh, in the And I think it's no problem, but I cannot tell you if in fact the titochrome B450 uh, is in influence. I don't think so, but not because of this arbutin or because the hydrogen, you know, maybe for the flavonoid. It's possible. For instance, there are a lot of publications about um, grape juice. Um, some, we thought uh, grape juice is uh, very healthy, and now we know we know that we should not take with anticoagulants, we should not take with sulfur because they activate this uh, cytochrome. No? I cannot tell you. I will tell you uh, there are no interactions because there are no publication data regarding this table. But your question was what, yeah. So I have another question, but it's in the same kind of sense that uh, the question already posed. If you want to put on the market a new composite, you have to show that the co any compound in the specialty is not toxic. Yes. If there is one compound, you have to do it once. But if there is two, even if it's a racemic, you have to show that any uh, kind of compound has no toxicity, what is the safety, and so on. In that case, and it's nice for you, you do not need to do that. But it doesn't mean that there is nothing, just it, it is not known. And what I saw in your data is that there is no large clinical trial. What you show uh, in uh, your clinical data concerns 12 patients or antibiotics, so very small amount uh, of people. Yes. After that, you say, OK, we have 7 million of users, OK, and there is no OK. It's finally the reality. And the reality is in favor of your compound. But it doesn't mean that there is, in fact, no toxicity. What it means is that there is no high toxicity or large toxicity, because if it was the case, it has been seen. Or the concentration that we produce in our bodies? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. toxic. yes, yes. But uh, I think that what is surprising for me is that the regulatory bodies accept today this kind of things because they do not accept for any any specialty, but they accept for <coughs> that kind of preparation or grape juice or yes, I don't know what. But it's very it's it's very interesting that I think that a lot of things. Uh, so it depends on who are the clients. So some clients prefer to have natural yeah, things, but the chemical things are the same that natural. It's only the principle of action which has been synthesized and put in a specialty, but more or less it's the same. But I think that this is very interesting because it shows how to manage, your presentation shows how to manage with regulatory bodies in this kind of discussions yeah. of, of specialties and the interest, the, there's the interest or advantage of this kind of specialty as compared to other treatment for this um, uh, indicate this indication. I just would like to add, yes, you're right, that we use the urine and we measure what is, uh, uh, how much uh, this metabolites, all the free retinol. But the others are everything there because we did not select. 
So the other, the flower one, it's the yes. metabolites from every every um, component yeah. constituent is there in your bean. And normally you have to to separate to, prove, to separate and yes. show what happened with each of them. But the guidelines are for dust. Okay. The guidelines okay. are to say if the A test is negative, that means all the com all the set is negative. If it's positive, then you have to go further and to look for what is, and then you have to discuss. Yes, but you are under the line. Yes, but we wanted to go further because we thought, okay, here is someone maybe it's not, but we want to know to, uh, to know what happened then in the complete body of the mouse. It, I just wanted to say that it's very easy to say, oh, I put 200 micro, uh, micrograms uh, per kilo for uh, um, free hydroquinone. It's not the same because when we have an extract, we produce other metabolites that we did not identify. But are there? 